I am just making my way up a very steep incline up to the summit of Steel Fell. We're in the central fells of the Lake District today, hoping to take off a few Wainwrights. Some that I've passed through before, not really spent much time on, and others that I've not done before. So it should be a productive day. I've got most of my kit with me that I'm gonna be taking to Aaron in Scotland in a couple of weeks' time. So I'm back out just testing myself with that kit again. I've managed to shave off a few things from my last trip that I didn't necessarily think I needed. And I've dropped the weight baby by a kilo, which is good, which is really good. And I'm hoping to notice it today. It's a little tough to notice it on this section as it's pretty much straight up. Hopefully we should see some differences today. One thing that I have read about these fells is that the way that they are formated and the way that the fells lie and the rock formations that are underneath them, the ground drains really, really well, which is great for pitching a tent on because you're almost always gonna get not boggy conditions, nice dry pitch for your tent, but it's not great when you need to get water, you need to filter a bit of water because most of the standing water up here has been here for a while if it's like lay on top of rocks and whatnot and there's not really that much water running off the fells in fact I didn't pass any streams at all except for the one down near the car so when I do find a good amount of standing water that's not disgusting <laughs> I will stop and filter it because it might just be the last little bit of water that I get for the day. There we go. There's the summit of Steel Fell. A new one ticked off for me. <laughs> Not much of a view up here because we're just sitting in the bottom of the clouds, but from now we're gonna drop down and we'll hopefully come out the cloud coverage but it's very barren up here. It feels very remote. I didn't realize there was this much of a plateau up at the top here. And yeah, it's very open. I imagine this could get really windy with the winds coming off that uh, Langdale and Scarfell peak. I could just see in the distance there actually, just beyond the clag there, that there's a nice body of water. So that's where we'll filter some water. It's nice to see that up ahead and know that we'll be able to get some at least for food, for drinks later tonight. And because I'm not really going up anymore, I don't mind filling up on water from this point. Yeah, we're moving quickly now. We've come down off the summit. And more importantly for me today, we're coming out the clouds because last week I spent 20 plus hours in, in the clouds and I'm thankful that I had somebody with me because it was quite demoralizing and a, a little bit depressing just sitting in the cloud because there's no view, you're getting soaking wet and it's cold, really cold. So there's a decent amount of standing water here and it looks pretty clear, it's quite deep water and as long as I don't disturb it too much it should, should be okay. Um, I'm going to filter this, fill my bottles up with enough water to drink now and uh, hopefully enough for meals and drinks tonight. So yeah, 
many squeeze to filter me water. I've got enough with me now. That summit over there is Steel Fell, and that's where we've come from. We've worked our way down here, and we're heading up there to the top where there's another way in right called Calf Crag. So there you go, that is Calf Crag. That is the second way in right of the day. about two o'clock in the afternoon and I'm moving a bit faster than thought I was going to be and uh, I'm just slowing it down a bit putting another layer on I'm going to have something to eat something to drink and then I'll move on to hopefully make sure that I reach where I want to pitch tonight with good time without getting there too early so that there's not too many people around I can see back across to where I've just come from and it actually looks like it's starting to clear in a few patches, so I don't mind slowing down, taking my time a little bit more, and uh, yeah, enjoying the view. After last week spending 20 hours in the cloud, it's much welcome. So that is the third Wainwright of the day. That is Gibson Knot. Only one more to go. And I'm sure for those of you that have done this route before, you know exactly which one that is. The infamous Helm Crag, which is where I'm hopefully gonna find a pitch tonight. There it is, the Howitz. I'm just looking at this now. It's incredible, it, it's something else. I've never been up here before, which is crazy because it, it's only 400 meters. And it's so easy to get to, especially from the other side, which I'm gonna go down in the morning. But this is stunning. If this was at the top of any other 900 meter plus mountain, it'd be the biggest attraction in the Lake District, easy. But because it's not, it's it's um, it's not that popular. I mean, it, there's plenty of people up here today, but as far as like mountaineering goes and stuff, it's um, it's not really one of the ones that's sought after. But you can see here how all this rock that's in this little divot here has fell away thousands of years ago, thousands of years ago. But as that rock's fell away, it's left this like amazing piece sticking up and who knows maybe that in time will also go but <laughs> not in my lifetime anyway
But yeah, incredible. And for those of you that are familiar with the Wainwright box, you'll notice this is the very sketch that's on the front of the Central Fells book. And um, you can see why. <laughs> it's uh, really, really, really cool. Now, an interesting fact is that Wainwright didn't actually ever touch the very tip of that. And to be fair, a man of his age, I wouldn't expect him to get up on there, on all fours, climbing up to the summit of that, because it, it is quite technical, it's quite tough. Right, let's do this properly. Let's get up on top. Incredible, just incredible. Now I've got to get down. Here we are, all pitched up, everything thrown in the tent, and the sun's just gone down behind the Langdale Fells over there. So, Hilleberg Acto, the red label. Now, I always run a 10 millimeter pole with this. Um, it's probably the first upgrade I did, just because a 10 millimeter pole is, what, 60 quid? It's a huge upgrade for the tent, and it makes it pretty much rock solid. Probably overkill today, well, most definitely overkill today as there's no wind at all, but it weighs just a fraction more than the uh, than the one that comes with standard. So I upgrade to the 10 and I even double pole when I need to. Okay, so sleeping bag is the Rab Ascent 900. Um, it's a sleeping bag that keeps me nice and comfy. I sleep pretty cold, so that's really, really helpful. Um, Firmer S Neo Air and then just an inflatable pillow just to stay light. And in the winter, I always bring um, a bivvy bag. This is just the Rab Trailhead bivvy. It's pretty lightweight, but just because of the condensation in the Hilleberg tents, I like to use one of them just to keep any moisture off me and stuff off the bag. My clothes and stuff like that. Water, a little bit of med kit and the jet boil. Really minimal amount of kit today, but this is the, the kit that I'm going to be taking to Aaron, so. Um, I'm trying to practice running with this kind of kit. Classic, simple and easy. And this is where we're pitched up. Just below the Howitz. On a brilliant little spot. The food that I've brought with me today. So, I'm trying out a few things before we go to Aaron. Um, obviously, I would love to take buckets full of dehydrated meals, but we all know how expensive they can get. So I've been making some at home myself, and this is chicken noodle, um, and it fits into one of these tip and zip bags, which open up at the bottom like so. You stand them up, and you can pour hot water into them and they're safe to eat from. So they're kind of like a dehydrated meal. Also got with me today a, like a pasta one with like a pasta sauce in it. And then for breakfast, I've got um, oats with currants, apricots, sultanas, that kind of thing, with powdered milk in there and sugar and whatever else I normally put in my oats. Um, and that'll that'll keep like that for about six weeks, and you can see how how thin that actually is. So um, I'm going to take 
a fair few of them with me because they keep quite well. Quite well. Uh, six weeks that I'll keep for just because of the powdered milk inside there. All right, this is boiled. Let's get myself a brew and uh, warm up a little bit while I soak in the last of today's daylight. I actually remembered to bring me milk this time. <laughs> Can't tell you how many times I've forgotten to bring milk. And tea without milk. It's criminal. So the sun has gone down behind the mountains in the distance. And you can just see Pavey Arc and Harrison Stickle sticking out above the rest of everything else. Over in the distance with all the clouds still on it, Scarfell Pike. And there's the tent. Looking great underneath the grand howitzer. And the sky above me is really clear. We should get a really good night here tonight. So that's at full boiling point now, so I'll pour that in, or I'll pour what I need in, just like I would a normal dehydrated meal. Alright, let's see how this worked. Maybe I'll put a little bit too much water in. I guess I could drink it like soup later. Oh, that is spot on. Oh, that is so good. The noodles have soaked the water up perfectly. Nice and spicy too. All that chicken's gone to the bottom. There's some chicken there. Nice bit of chicken there. That is spot on. I made up with that. Cheers. It's a good life. Just got a silhouette of the mountains in the distance there, but the door wide open. Such a still calm night. It's not a drop of wind. Good morning. Slept okay. Pretty um, pretty quiet night, as expected. But um, I've just woke up, opened the tent up, and this is what I've woken up to. We're back in the clouds. <laughs> no morning view. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get the stove on. I'm gonna have some breakfast, and um, yeah, start to pack down. If it clears, it clears. If not, I'm not too bothered. All right, let's get the stove on. Let's get warmed up. Let's get some breakfast.
you know what, I'm actually, um, I'm actually quite sad to be coming down this way because every time I turn back, the view that I see, amazing. All these little outcrops and these steps just wind up in between them. Incredible. I'll definitely have to come back this way and, and go up this side. It looks like I'm about to drop down into a bit of a woodland before hitting the main path back to the car. And you can just hear all the birds waking up. Clouds just starting to break. Everyone's waking up. Probably my favourite time. That was a wild camp on the summit of Helm Crag. I hope you enjoyed that one, because I certainly did. Really nice spot, one that I'll come back to in the future. One that I'll probably bring a couple of friends to. So the pitch was enormous. Nice amount of space to put a few tents. So, next time you see me, I'll be on my four day expedition trip to the Isle of Arran, doing three nights of wild camping and four days of backpacking. A trip that we took quite a lot of preparation for, so I'm really looking forward to it. There's about five of us going, so yeah, it should be really good. So, I'm going to sign off this video here. I'm going to leave you with a few clips of the scenery that I'm about to go through before I get back to the car. So, until I see you, I see you.